Hey everyone, I'm Aliana and welcome to my channel. Requested by many of you, today I will do a whiteboard challenge video. And whiteboard challenge is actually my favorite part in a design interview because it directly showcases our design skill, problem solving skill, and communication skill. Well, before I get started, I would like to tell you two of my major advice. My first advice is to download a template before going into an interview and make sure to adjust the template so that it fits your design habit. My second advice is to ask as many questions as possible. Well, without further ado, let me introduce you to the interviewer of today, Lenny. Lenny is the founder and the CEO of LikeTheBamboo.com, and she will be the interviewer of today's video. Let's get started. Hey, Aliana, how's everything going? Great. Well, it's very nice to meet you. My name is Lenny and I work as the lead designer at LikeTheBamboo.com. So today we prepared two questions for you and you can choose from the two options. The first one is designing a dog walking app. Um, the second one is designing an alarm clock. Do you have any preference? Well, thank you so much for actually providing me two options. I will choose the dog walking app. All right, so let's get started. Well. We can do some sorts of a role play as if I'm the founder of this, you know, dog working app company and I hire you as a designer. So feel free to ask any question that you like. Um, and yeah, let's have fun. Yeah. So I would like to learn more about the context of your company. So before I jump into designing anything, could you please tell me about your company? Yeah, sure. So we are a small startup based in San Francisco and we're thinking about designing a dog working app for people who are, you know, very busy or are not probably not very convenient to go out all the time, um, but have a dog to walk on a daily basis. In our team, we are all pets lovers and we see a need here in the Bay Area um, and probably in the United States in general, uh, where people need to get their dogs walked. Great. I'm also an animal lover, so it sounds like a great idea. May I ask you what is the current team in your company? Yeah, so we currently have four people. Um, two of them are software engineers, one sales and marketing person, and I'm the CEO and the founder of our company. Got it. So could you please let me know regarding where you are at, like the progress you've made in the startup stage? Yeah, so basically we've conducted some user research um, and gathered some people that are interested in, in the idea. I, I would say like we're still pretty early, you know, um, and we also don't want to start coding anything that the user don't like. Uh, and that's why we brought you in. Got it. Um, now regarding this project, is there any constraint like time and cost? Yeah, I would say we are looking for completing the MVP of this app in three months um, and it has to be an iOS app. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Um, now you said you guys have done a bit of user research. Could you please tell me about who might be the user? So we're targeting people who have dogs, um, people in the United States, I guess starting from the Bay Area. And we're looking at people around, you know, ranging from 30 to 80 years old. I would say a typical user would be someone um, with medium income and they're either too busy to walk their dog or just have like health problem to actually walk their dogs. I see, then we probably, we definitely need to design for accessibility because you know, there's older people um, and also people with um, disability. So I would like to ask you, what are the current solutions for the problem? Like if the user don't have our app, what would they do? Well, many of them ask their friends and family and arrange the time by messaging apps. Um, there are other apps out there, but the design is a little bit outdated. And I would say the cost is a little bit too high. So some also bring their pet to the pet center. I think, I think that's kind of all. All right. Now I'd love to build a persona for the challenge. Um, having a mm -hmm. persona will help us to build a clear vision of who we're designing for. So based on what you've said, how about a woman named K? Yeah, I mean, K, K sounds great. I would say 50 years old, 
um, probably having two dogs, having two kids and, and a husband. And what would be her job? Maybe a magazine writer. Okay, now I would like to define the problem statement. Mm -hmm. So I would say K is, let's say K is um, warm hearted. Um, 50, uh, give me a second, 50 year old lady who needs to get her dog walked by trustworthy dog walkers because she is often busy yet she wants to take good care of her dogs does that make sense that looks good to me now with that in mind i'd like to brainstorm some key features of the app with you i'm just going to brainstorm something so feel free if you want to add anything um i mean owner and dogs profile like name type of dog age description i mean definitely contact information if they want to you know connect and um, arrange a time select date function i mean since this is a dog walking app there will be people who want their dogs to be walked and there will be people who want to walk other people's dog so i guess there can be separate design for the owner versus the dog walker, um, I guess instructions of taking care of the dog. I think um, notification and review, those are also very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think definitely notification and review are important, fully agree. Now let me note down the user flow that I had in mind and let's discuss and work on that. So key user flow. So I would say like in the beginning, encounter the app um, from social media or from other places, advertisement, download the app. This is for a first time user, um, by the way, first time user. And then they probably will have a landing page or intro page that tells what does the apps do. And after that, there will be a register page. You can choose owner, worker, or, or just simply register. Um, let's say we are going to design for the dog owners version. First of all, add a profile. This will be the profile for the user, including things like contact information. And after that, they will be adding a dog profile. Um, a dog profile, dog's name, type, age, description. And then, I guess, sending a request. So time, location, uh, or maybe like choose three dog walkers near me to send emails. I think after that, if somebody actually get back to, to the dog worker, then she or he has to get notification um, if dog workers are interested and then they will communicate uh, for communication I think you know a lot of app has this chat chat places where you can just chat in the app um, but for since you're designing a MVP I would say like simply by exchanging emails or, or phone number what would also work so I would just leave communicate to here and then get the dogs walked. And finally, I guess, review the dog worker. Yeah, so this is the user flow. Um, 
that I designed based on the problem that we defined and also the user we had in mind. What do you think about it? Yeah, I think that looks great. Um, can you draw out some wireframes to, to the pages you mentioned here? Sure. So let me first just you know highlight the pages that are important uh, for the MVP. The landing intro page, register, a, add a profile, give me a second, send a request. And definitely also they review the dog worker. I will try to adjust my camera, but I will definitely also like send you, um, you know, a scan after this. Uh, for the landing intro page, I think there can be like an image of people walking dog. And then welcome, welcome, heading lines. There can be like, you know, three pages to, to, to run through if necessary. So, landing. then going to the register. For the register page, I guess just very simple username, um, logging with Facebook, all those things. So I guess register headline, register with email, um, continue, and then maybe choosing Google, Facebook, Apple, uh, Google. Facebook, Apple. Okay. Log in with Google, log in with Facebook. This will be the register sign up. After this, we'll be adding a dog profile. Actually, no, sorry. Adding a, a person profile. So actually, I would say if they're already registered, then there is already an email in it. Um, and I'm not sure why they still have to do that or not. So let's just first jump into the dog profile page. I think that's a very important page. A dog profile, well, there definitely has to be like an upload image for the dog. Um, asking basic questions like what's the name, what's the type, and choose uh, heading, and then probably adding some other questions. Maybe also a description. And next. Um, the contact can also go in here, you know, what is the best contact to, to, to find your dog? <laughs> yeah. Dog profile. Well, after a dog profile, there will be sending a request. So probably after that will be the homepage of the app. So the home page. Um, for the home page, we can do a hamburger bar, you know, to add a setting things in here. And then maybe like a welcome sentence. Did you walk your dog today? <laughs> I would say we can do like an add button in the bottom right. So that when, whenever I want to add a request, it will be shown here. And for things to show on the main page, I think we can do trip history. Uh, we can also do dog walkers near me. We can also showcase the dog profile here, our major dog, uh, main dog. Let's do a dog feature here. 
this will be one of my dog um, name da 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 and it's also feature like people near me you can do like three dog workers near me oh probably a bigger bigger frame would be better for here and then trip history or just order history After that, I guess the important page, which is to add a request. So to add a request uh, for the header, we can have a back uh, bike icon. Adding a request, we can choose a dog. <laughs> I mean, some people have different dog. So let's say this is our dog we already uploaded. We can also like add a profile here, right? Just in case we want to um, do the other dog. And we can do the timing. This is choosing the date, choosing the time, adding some simple request, maybe like a message and instructions. Mm. We can also, also feature like dog workers near me. So I can choose one of them. We can feature like five people. Give them a description and then I would choose like sending a notification to them. And then we can go to the next step. Oh, there will be a button here, but there's no space for me to draw anymore. Uh, after that, we can pre preview the request. Just make sure everything is done neatly. Still the back one you can edit. So here's your dog, a happy dog. And then here's the timing, the start date, end date, things like that, the description. And then there are three people you want to notify. Maybe they are your friend, maybe you know them, or maybe just, you're just interested in their location. And then send the request. Just trying to extend the page. Confirm. If I have time, I also do like, you know, the review the dog worker page. Um, that's also important. So that's the basic idea I have in mind. I will send you like a scan of this. Well, great. I think you did a great job, Aliena. Now I would like to ask you a follow up question. So let's say if I'm no longer a startup founder, but rather we are an existing website for dogs owner community and we want to add the dog walking thing as a feature, what would you do differently? Wow, that's a great question. Well, first of all, um, if the entire thing is a feature instead of an independent product, then its function and style has to stick with the main product. When it comes to the user flow, then it makes a different entrance point. And also if it's you know already a dog owner's community, then maybe the user already has a profile for herself and her dog. So we will have to consider using existing information and map that with the new feature. And if there's already a chat function for this community website, then we can also bring that in, assuming you know people who are willing to walk the dogs are also users in the website. And finally, if it's designing for the web, not for an app, I would design for a responsive web, meaning both the desktop and mobile versions need to be considered.
I think that's a great answer, Aliana. And that's the end of our whiteboard challenge. Thank you, Lenny. I hope you have a great day. Bye. And thank you so much for watching. This is actually way more difficult than I expected because I have to be two people in the video and I'm trying to be responsive. I'm trying to record myself. I'm trying to record my screen. I'm trying to do this. And I was also trying to catch up with the script. So what actually ended up on the whiteboard looks a little bit less than what I prepared. Um, and in an actual whiteboard exercise, you probably will write and ask a bit more than this. Um, but I, this is just the basic idea of how a whiteboard exercise can go. And I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't subscribed to me, please do so. You know how it is so hard to become a UX designer and I'm still struggling. So let's support each other and have a great day.